Today we'll be showing the Eva Light uh, inside of Artec Studio. Um, the Eva Light is the exact same scanner as the Artec Eva, the full version, except it just does not use the color mapping built into the uh, software to do your alignments and mesh configuration. Um, however, it's still a very uh, useful and uh, powerful scanner. Um, today I have a, a dash in front of me that I'll be scanning. Uh, let me get the scanner connected. All right. So the operation of the scanner is very simple. There's just uh, two buttons on the back, basically one to start recording and one to complete. Um, we'll use this histogram, which is the kind of green bars on the left-hand side of the software uh, to judge our depth. So it's, the software itself is telling us where the scanner needs to be in relation to the part. As you can see, I sort of have a uh, dash from, from a vehicle just to show you um, some of the, uh, probably some of the best scanning capabilities of this with organic uh, objects. Um, and we'll just start scanning. So you can see as I start scanning, um, it basically builds a 3D model of the part. Um, it kind of like 3D spray painting. Um, this part is about three feet wide and about a foot, a foot and a half tall, just to give you an idea of scale. Um, however, the scanner can very easily scan up to, uh, really up to the limits of your software. However, within reason, I would say uh, eight to 12 feet would be your upper limits of one single scan. Um, but again, that may, that may be limited by your computer. And for smaller parts, I would say um, that in the six inch range, if you're not looking for a whole lot of detail, that would probably be the smaller end. Um, so we'll get one scan. I'm gonna leave a little bit off of it uh, just so I can scan it again and show you some of the alignment techniques if you don't get the whole, uh, the whole part in one. Um, so with that first scan done, we'll just simply begin the second scan um, this would be maybe a continuation of a part, or if you needed to kind of change your scanning setup or move around a little bit, uh, just get in a better position for scanning. Um, I'll come around and scan this side of the piece. That way we can uh, scan the completed part. All right. So with the majority of the scan data that we need for this, I'll go ahead and stop scanning. Um, so now we'll have two separate scans, and these we can work with uh, very easily. Uh, the software, by the way, is Artec Studio uh, 12, which is the proprietary scanning software for the Artec scanners. Uh, this software, really, it's, what it's best at is just getting good, clean scan data out, um, out the door as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, you can do light measurements, which we can go over in a minute. But this software is where you'll do all the scan editing, um, all the uh, process work just to get you the data that you need. So the tool that we'll be using inside of this software is called Autopilot, which you can see is selected in blue on the left-hand side. Um, this is uh, basically gonna do all of our work for us. Um, so we'll continue, we'll start editing um, just to remove some of the data that we do not need. Um, with this, we'll use the lasso tool just as it's the quickest and kind of most, most effective way to do it. We'll hit erase and we'll use a cutoff plane to the bottom. So with this cutoff plane, you'll see it'll basically make an average across the part that we can then scroll up through the piece and use it as a sort of as a flat surface. You can see I can just move that up through erase and it'll erase everything below. The small objects, we don't have to worry about it as there's an algorithm for that in the software. Um, so that's no big deal. And since we have two scans, we'll just have to do this process twice. Um, now, if you're scanning a very large object, um, there's not really a lot of editing that needs to be done per se. Um, but for smaller objects such as this, um, it may be maybe more beneficial. So we'll uh, click erase. And then we'll do our cutoff plane selection one more time just to get this base out of here. All right, scroll that up through, click erase. And I, this is just a rough scan. So there's gonna be some noise showing, but this will clean up pretty quick um, in the next couple steps. So we'll click next. And for, for the alignment, the software will always try to do the alignment first on its own. Um, if the alignment fails, um, then all you do is a simple three-point alignment just to get those scans snapped together. Um, 
then it can continue on with its uh, processing alg algorithm. So we'll see if it gets it. And it did, but I'm still going to show you how to manually align um, just for the purpose of the demo. So if the software was not able to align the scans together, um, this would kind of be an orientation like they were before. It's very simple. Um, this three-point alignment, um, it is manual, but it does not have to be exact. Uh, the nice thing about this alignment is that uh, you can just use just kind of similar geometry, but it doesn't have to be perfect uh, just to get it together. So what this does, that happens kind of quick. Um, unfortunately, I can't really walk through that one just because it's so, or talk through that one because it's so quick, but it aligns the points together. Then once the points are close together, it'll snap and mesh together. That's why the points don't have to be exact. They just have to be close. So we'll click next, and this will do our model creation. There are these six preset steps that it'll do for us. I mean, you used to have to do all these manually, but it's basically just giving you the cleanest SQL file possible. Um, so right after this fusion step, we'll have our model that we can look through. Um, and this will be the, the two scans that we had originally taken. Um, and they will be together combined into one that you can export as an SDL. Um, so here's the fusion. Um, it'll do a, that last filter to get rid of the, the um, small objects that were flying around if you saw it for just a second. Um, and this mesh simplification is basically going to reduce the file size to kind of the optimal accuracy without uh, degrading the scan quality at all, just to remove some of the data that may not need to be there. Okay. So now we have a final, uh, finished STL. Now you could export this if you wanted to. Um, however, there are a couple other cleanup options. The first you may notice is kind of this edge. Um, because it is just a raw edge that I was scanning on, uh, the best way to fix that was actually this edges tool, which is under fix hold. Um, and you can select all the edges. Uh, let me uh, deselect all. Select all and then smooth. And what this will do, it'll just basically make a, a nice clean edge for you. It'll reduce a lot of the noise. Um, and you can run this algorithm a couple of times uh, to run the, the, uh, the strength up, and it'll basically refine the edge. And that's really just for kind of light cleanup. Um, it's not necessary, but it can make it a little bit nicer when you're just doing some of your modeling. So we'll click Apply to get out of that tool with it cleaned up a little bit. Um, if you have any holes left, like these, um, you can go to this fix holes option again. Um, and with these two holes, I can very easily um, fill them. And you can see it kind of leaves an average. Um, and you really can't tell that the holes were even there. Um, it just cleans them up very quickly and very easily. And it uses the, it basically uses the geometry surrounding the scan to give you the best uh, quality possible. You can see how there is kind of a ruffled data. I may have um, not spent enough time kind of scanning there. I may have just brushed it really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's very quick and easy to fill holes in the software and the software does a very good job of it. Uh, you can see there's a pretty good scratch just to show some of the scan quality um, just that it, that it was able to pick up. Uh, for one more thing that we'll go over is measurement. Um, you can either do uh, straight line measurements or geodesic. I'll show the geodesic first. Um, a geodesic is basically just traveling across the um, across the profile, finding the two, or basically the shortest path between the two. Um, we'll try to compute one. Sometimes they take a few minutes, um, so they're not always the best for the demo. Um, if this does take a minute, then we'll we'll do a different one. But just to show you some of the capabilities of the software. We'll see. These geodesic measurements take a lot of uh, a lot of resources from the computer, so sometimes they take a minute. Okay, yep, so we got it. So you can see how that is a curve measurement. Um, and that was just two arbitrary points. I wasn't trying to do anything specific other than just to show you the, the fact that this software can take geometric, geodesic measurements across the part. 
So let's say we wanted to make a different one. Um, I'll go back to measurements. Uh, if we wanted to cut a section, we could. Um, the best way to do this is um, maybe you wanted to understand the profile of this um, area in here. Uh, you could begin to take these points and it'll basically average it through the profile and create section. And this section we can actually, uh, if, if you wanted to export this as a CSV file, um, and basically to just get this profile in XYZ point or to get the diameter, you can export that um, basically through this export tool. Um, you can do surface deviations between two parts, and you can also do linear measurements. So um, if you're just checking, maybe if you're just going to do a quick line of sight inspection um, on a part, maybe the diameter of this piece, if this was the, you know, the numerical value that you're looking for, plus or minus a couple of millimeters, um, that would be, you know, just a quick way to check measurements. Um, you could also do maybe tolerance ring in here. You can basically take measurements wherever you want. Um, so that's just to show the measurement tool. Um, so I believe that those are the questions that uh, Tom had for us. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll probably wrap this up now. Oh, to export. Um, here's, you can export those uh, measurements separately um, as uh, CSV files. Um, or if we go to the scan, uh, there's a couple different options. So if we export scans, you have these file types. Uh, your PLY, PLY and your OBJs are going to be um, for a lot of uh, mapping softwares, whereas the STL is kind of the industry standard uh, triangulated mesh, um, which that's going to work in almost every single 3D scanning or uh, 3D modeling software. Um, there are a couple other options if you have very specific needs. Uh, but these top three are going to be the primary that you're going to be looking for. Um, and just as a standard export, uh, you pick a destination, press OK, and it'll export it right away. Um, so hopefully this was informative, and hopefully we'll answer some questions.